Welcome to lecture 25 on stochastic processes. Uh, recall that in previous lecture, we have seen uh, the definition of Poisson process, uh, which says that the Poisson process is a continuous time Markov chain xt t greater than or equal to 0, that means the time domain is from 0 to infinity, with the state space S is equal to 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 that means the state st space is non-negative integers the set of non-negative integers. The following two properties define the Poisson process. x0 is equal to 0, that means the process starts from 0. And for sufficiently small h, the transition probabilities are given as follows. Uh, first one says that uh, a movement uh, from i to i plus 1 is possible with this probability lambda h plus order of h. And second equation says that the movement from i to i is possible with probability 1 minus lambda h plus little oh. And the third one says that uh, the movement from i to j, where j is greater than or equal to i plus 2, that means the forward movement of more than to 2 or more than 2 steps, that is the probability is very small, little oh. And uh, the backward movement, fourth uh, equation implies that the backward movement is not possible. So, we have seen these things and then uh, I have discussed about that this, under these conditions, the Poisson process will have stationary and independent increments. That means increments will be independent and they will have same distribution. And the second claim is that for each fixed t, this xt uh, will have Poisson distribution with parameter lambda t. And that is the uh, that is why the name is Poisson process. So uh, probability that x t is equal to n is equal to e to the power minus lambda t lambda t to the power n divided by factorial n. n ranges from 0, 1 to n. So I have shown uh, the proof of uh, this for n is equal to 0. So let p n t is equal to probability that x t is equal to n. So, for H positive, we have shown that P0T satisfy this uh, differential equation P0 prime T is equal to minus lambda P0T. And after solving this differential equation, we get P0T is equal to e to the power minus lambda T, which is uh, uh, the result for N is equal to 0. Now, we will uh, move for further and show uh, the same thing true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So for now, now for n greater than or equal to 1, what we will have? So, p n t plus h, p n t plus h means probability that at time t plus h, there are n individuals or the process is in state n. Now you can see if it is 0, so what is our requirement? Our requirement is at t plus h, there are n items. So at time t, we will fix what happens at time t. So this distance uh, is this length of the interval is t and this length is h. Okay. So, now we are going to condition upon <coughs> the state of the process at time t. So, what are the possibilities? At time t, a state may be at n and there is no increment in the interval, next interval. That means this is 0. Okay. So, here the possibility is that at time t, there are n individuals or a state, uh, the process is in a state n and from t to t plus h, there is no increment. So, you can see the x t plus h minus x t is equals to 0. So, there is no increment here. So, see this is, uh, this, this is the position of x t and this is the position of x t plus h and 
we want that x t plus h is equals to capital L is equals to small L. So at x t may be L and there is no increment. That is the first condition. Second condition is second possibility is x t can be n minus one. Okay, and then there is one increment. x t plus h minus x t can be one. Okay. Then, if uh, at time t there are n minus one possibility, and then you increase one possibility, then at a time t plus h there will be n. And the third possibility is remember that we cannot go backward. That means if there are n elements, then at a time t you cannot have n plus one elements because if at a time t n plus one uh, is the state, then at time t plus h it cannot be n. so the possibility is that x t it can be n minus k and the increment is k and this k can vary from 0 2 to n okay so these are the three possibilities of this uh, probability so we have uh, since they are mutually exclusive possibilities we are adding them now as we have seen in previous case these uh, increments are independents so this xt can be written as xt minus x0 because x0 is 0 so you will have two increments xt minus x0 and xt plus h minus xt and since the intervals are non overlapping they will be independent so we can separate them this probability xt is n multiplied by probability that xt plus h minus xt is zero so i am using the condition that uh, increments are independent first thing is this second one is similarly probability that xt is n minus 1 multiplied by probability that x t plus h minus x t is equals to 1 plus summation k from 2 to n probability that x t is equals to n minus k multiplied by probability that x t plus h minus x t is equals to k the reason is since increments are independent increments are independent okay now uh, we know that this can be further written as probability that x t is equals to n and this is same as probability that x h is zero why because the interval is uh, the length of the interval is h so this is same as a uh, probability x h is equals to zero plus probability that x t is equals to n minus 1 multiply by the probability that x h is equals to 1 the third one is summation k from 2 to n probability that x t is equals to n minus k multiply by probability that x h is equals to k okay now you can write down first one is nothing but p and t and second we know that probability xh is equals to 0 is equals to 1 minus lambda h plus little oh this is by definition this is the this is from property 2 and probability xt is equals to n minus 1 is probability n minus 1t and probability xh is equals to 1 from property number Two. This is equal to lambda h plus little o h. 
the third one is k from 2 to n this is probability n minus k t and probability that xh is equals to k where k is greater than or equal to 2 this is nothing but little o h so remember i am using these three things i am using these three things here which are written in red See, I am using these equations. Probability x h is equal to 1 is equal to lambda h plus o h, which is, which is written in red. Probability x h is equal to 0, 1 minus lambda h plus little o h. Probability x h greater than or equal to 2, that is little o h. So, I am using that. Now, <coughs> what we will get, see, this is p n t minus lambda h p n t plus p plus lambda h p n minus 1 t plus whatever we have. See, what we have actually? We have this uh, little uh, we have this P N T plus P N minus 1 T times little o h and plus summation A from 2 to N P N T little o h. Okay. See what we p n t multiply this this little o h and p n minus 1 t multiply by this little o h. I am writing here. Now, what we are ha we are having, remember that if uh, <coughs> this little o h is multiplied by these things, so this uh, if you divide it by uh, h, it will uh, converge to 0 whenever h uh, converges to 0. So, what we are getting ultimately? Uh, ultimately, we are getting that Pn T plus H is equal to this. So, what we have? We have this. This implies that this implies that P N T plus H T plus H is equals to this. So this further implies that P N T plus H minus P N T divided by H is equals to minus lambda times p and t plus lambda times <coughs> p n minus 1 t plus whatever is written here that can be written as little o h divided by h okay see i am writing all these things i am considering all these things, all of these things as little o h, okay, because uh, these are uh, uh, of the order little o h, they are the functions little o h. So, I am considering all of them as little o h and what we are getting? If we take limit h decreases to 0, p n t plus h minus p and t divided by h is equals to minus lambda p and t plus lambda p n minus 1 t plus limit h decreases to 0 little o h divided by h. So, what it gives us? It gives us that 
this is p n prime t that means the derivative of p n t and what is this this is uh, minus lambda p n t plus lambda p n minus 1 t and this is uh, this will be 0 this limit h decreases to 0 little o h divided by h that will be 0 so again we are getting a uh, differential equation so we have to solve this differential equation and this is the uh, you can uh, understand this is first order linear differential equation and you can solve this by using integrating factor so p n prime t is plus lambda times p n t is equals to lambda times p n minus 1 t okay so we multiply it by integrating factor so uh, i assume that you know how to find the integrating factor so the integrating factor here comes out to be e to the power lambda t so i am leaving that for you to find how to find the integrating factor so this is lambda uh, we will multiply both the sides by e to the power lambda t which is the integrating factor p n prime t plus lambda times p n t is equals to lambda e to the power lambda t p n minus 1 t on multiplying on multiplying by integrating factor e to the power lambda t okay so we multiply by integrating factor e to the power lambda t so this is you can verify this is the derivative of e to the power lambda t p n t so you can easily verify that the uh, left hand side is nothing but derivative of e to the power lambda t p n t and that is why uh, we are uh, multiplying by e to the power lambda t so that we can get this kind of uh, things so this is lambda e to the power lambda t p n minus 1 t and of course here n is greater than or equal to 1 because then can be uh, anything from 1 to infinity so we are getting this equation this is our differential equation which we have to solve so consider that this is equation number 5.2 and uh, equation number 5.1 if uh, we call it equation number 5.1 uh, i have given the, like this this is our equation number 5.1 because we will use it that p0 t is e to the power minus lambda t we will use that so for n is equals to uh, 1 to 1 2 3 and so on we are having this differential equation we have to solve it so we solve it for n is equals to 1 first so for n is equals to 1 what we have we have d dt e to the power lambda t p 1 t is equals to lambda e to the power lambda t p 0 t and which is nothing but lambda e to the power lambda t what is p 0 t p 0 t you remember that that was e to the power minus lambda t so what we are getting we are getting just lambda so if we integrate on both the sides so what we are getting we are getting that integral of d dt e to the power lambda t p1 t dt is equals to lambda t 
plus some constant. So if we integrate both the sides, we are getting this. So this is e to the power lambda t t1 t is equals to lambda t plus some constant c1. So now we have to find the value of this constant c1. So again remember that this uh, p10 that means probability that at, at, at time 0 there are this process is in state 1. So we know that x0 is 0 actually. So x0 is equals to 1 this probability will be 0. So what we will get? Then we get e to the power lambda times 0 p10 is equals to lambda times 0 plus c1 which implies that c1 is 0 because p10 is 0 and lambda so you are getting c1 is 0 and therefore and therefore this e to the power lambda t p1 t is equals to just lambda t and what it will give you give us it will give us that p1 t is equals to e to the power minus lambda t lambda t to the power 1 divided by factorial 1. So you can see that we have to prove that p n t is equals to e to the power minus lambda t lambda t to the power n divided by factorial n. So that means our statement is true for n is equals to 1. So now we will use mathematical induction and uh, we have shown that uh, whatever you want to prove that is true for n is equals to 1 that is true for n is equals to 0. So now we will assume that uh, the statement is true for n is equals to k and we will show with the help of this assumption that the statement is true for n is equals to k plus 1 and then the mathematical induction we will have the a statement for all n greater than or equal to 0. So, now we assume this, uh, now assume that, now assume that this statement p k t, that means statement is true for n is equals to k. So, we are assuming that p k t is this k divided by factorial k and uh, this is for a fixed for a fixed but arbitrary sorry k and k can be anything from 1 to ok. So, we are assuming that this statement is true for n is equals to k and k can be anything from 1 to infinity. Now, if we can show that uh, it is true for k plus 1, then we have done. So, on putting on putting n is equals to k plus 1 in equation 5.2, we obtain In that, see, just I am writing p k. This uh, equation 5.2 means uh, that that uh, differential equation. So in that differential equation, if we put n is equals to k plus one, we will get d dt e to the power lambda t p k plus one t is equals to lambda e to the power lambda t p k t. So, this is we are getting from the differential equation uh, 5.2. Now, uh, we have assumed that p k t is this. So, just uh, put, put that value that p k t is nothing but e to the power minus lambda t and lambda t to the power k divided by factorial k. So, what we are getting e to the power minus lambda t will be cancelled out. So, we are getting lambda to the power k plus 1 divided by factorial k and t to the power k. So, we are getting this differential equation d dt e to the power lambda t p k plus 1 t. We are getting this. So, if we integrate both the sides, 
if we integrate both the sides, what we will get e to the power lambda t p k plus 1 t is equals to lambda to the power k plus 1 divided by factorial k t to the power k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 plus some constant c. So, on integrating both the sides, on integrating both the sides, we are getting this. Now, we have to find the value of c2. Again, since uh, this p k plus 1 0 is probability that x 0 is k plus 1 which is 0, we get c2 is equals to 0, okay, that you can verify. When putting uh, this uh, p k plus 1 0, you will get c, c2 is equals to 0 and therefore, And therefore, what we are getting ultimately e to the power lambda t p k plus 1 t is equals to lambda to the power k plus 1 t to the power k plus 1 divided by factorial k divided by k plus 1. So, from here we are getting that e to p to the power p k plus 1 t is equals to e to the power minus lambda t lambda t times t to the power k plus 1 divided by factorial k plus 1. So, see what we are getting where is we have shown that the statement is true for uh, n is equals to 0, the statement is true for n is equals to 1, then we have assumed that the statement is true for n is equals to k and with the help of that we have shown that the statement is true for n is equals to k plus 1. Hence, by mathematical induction, thus by mathematical induction, this p and t is e to the power minus lambda t, lambda t to the power n divided by factorial n n ranges from 0, 1, 2. So, by this uh, uh, way we have shown that this uh, uh, Poisson process has uh, Poisson distribution. So, uh, remember that uh, uh, this distribution is very important and this has lots of applications. So, we will uh, see that uh, these differential equations which we have sol solved here uh, that they not they may not be very easy for uh, every continuous time Markov chain. Since uh, this uh, has some special things, so these differential equations are easy to solve. So we will see what are the importance of these differential equations and in general how we can uh, formulate these differential equations in next few lectures. So I am uh, very thankful to you for watching this lecture. Thank you.